Um, Mike Trout texts me for fantasy advice for tomorrow night. What it is, what it do, this is Ramblin', your weekly Rams podcast that brings you insight of the team and news around the NFL. I'm your host and team reporter, Serena Morales, coming at you from Los Angeles, California. How fantastic is it to be 6-3? and three? The Rams won a huge divisional game against the Seahawks. Now prepare for Monday Night Football against TB12 and the Buccaneers. Today's guest is very special. He is the salt in the swat, the king of crash. The Colossus of Clout, the great Bambino of NFL news. He breaks the news before the news breaks. You already follow him at Adam Schefter on Twitter. And the lovely Adam Schefter is here with us now. Thank you for your time. Serena, um, thank you for that kind introduction. Oh, yeah, I man. He's the man. <laughs> before That's we welcome. get started, can we get the record straight? Me and Matt had a bet. Um, how many phones do you actually have? Two, and you're on one of them right now. Oh, all right, so he's got an extra one to break the news. Let's get to it. We cannot ignore the fact that the Rams defense has been outstanding, but a man Great. not named Aaron Donald or Jalen Ramsey is this week's defensive player of the week. Leonard Floyd had three sacks on arguably the leading MVP candidate this past Sunday. How huge is it for a player like Floyd to step up and have success on this Rams defense? Well, he, he played great. And, and listen, if you're going to get that kind of production from him, while you have these other guys, as you mentioned, then that defense is going to be as good as it's been this season. That's part of it, right? Um, so it's um, – I think their defense has been one of the best in the NFL, and they are flying under the radar. Like, they are tied atop that division, and it seems like everybody's talking about Russell Wilson and Kyle Murray. Nobody's talking about Jerry Goff and the Rams. Or, or when they are talking about him, they, they want him benched, as, as, as we were talking about, right? Like, which is just absurd to me, but um, – it's uh, to me, they're a very good team. Yeah, and, and I don't think they get enough street cred. But as you mentioned, on offense, it's been really exciting to see the continued success of this sort of pa pass and run game, a balanced pass and run game. Credit to the O line, who has been pretty consistent this season until this past Sunday. How big of a loss is it to lose Big Wit for six to eight weeks? You know, here here's the thing. First of all, the on field play is is excellent, but. He is as respected as just about anybody in the entire NFL. Like, people love that guy. They know the character that he has. And so I, I just think that you lose – it's a double whammy. You lose his on-field play and you lose his presence and the way he rubs off on people. I mean, you, you want as many Andrew Whitworths as you can have on a roster. And so that, that's, that's not ideal, losing him. Uh, not be easy to make up. Who is the backup left tackle? Off the top of my head, I don't even know it. I have not checked. Joe Nopum will fill in, who was out with an injury, but he's back. So we've got him. And, again, and, Chef, do you know, like, last season, the, the O-line had a lot of inconsistency. The most consistent guy was Andrew yeah, Whitworth. So we yep. kind of helped to build up, okay, now we've got some more NFL experience. You can throw in Joe Nopum, and it would be a little more fluid, if you will. Well, a Andrew Whitworth is consistent in life with everything. And so – uh, again, you, you don't want to lose a guy like that. And it sounds like they think they could have him back for the playoffs if they make a playoff run, which would be great, which would be great. Yeah. I mean, if anyone's going to come back from this, it is a uh, big wit. So prayers and speedy recovery to him. Big wit. I like that. Big, big wit. You cannot miss this guy. Quickly, it's insane because Whitworth, to your point, when we came back from our Super Bowl run in 2018, we got off the bus. We were packing up our stuff, getting our cars. Andrew Whitworth got off the bus, put on sweatpants. I don't even, he might've had sweatpants while he was still on the bus. I'm not sure, but started running and working out in the weight room immediately after coming back from Atlanta. So just. Well, that, that, that speaks to the kind of guy he is. And you don't, you don't play in the league at the level he has for as long as he has and have the respect that he does if you're not like that. By the way, so how long have you been with the Rams now for Serena? Two and a half years. Yeah. So you you were with them during the Super Bowl run? Mm -hmm. I know. I was the first year. I mean, don't thank me, but thank me. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, they should be thanking you. They should be thanking you. <laughs> so thank you, Shefty. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. No, it was an incredible first season for me. I was like, whoa, this, I don't think this ever happened. So um, speaking of what makes me happy, 
Yes. Adam, I don't um, believe you have been to a Rams game at SoFi Stadium this season, right? No. Okay. I have not left my house this season, basically. Okay. That makes sense. Um, but what makes me happy is, you know, obviously with the lack of fan cheering for the home team, the Rams still have this very unique home field advantage thanks to the in-house DJ, DJ Molsky. For example, against the Seahawks, the six times that Russell Wilson was sacked in the game, Molsky played Sierra and or future music. He also played Go Johnny Go every time Johnny Hecker goes in punts or in warm-ups. Um, do you think the absence of crowd noise affects players in the same way the excess noise does? Well, I, you know, listen, I, here's what I think. I, I think that this year is – so unusual and I cannot even imagine what it's like to be a player who is used to running out of the tunnel to 70,000 cheering fans screaming their guts out like it just adds to the hype and excitement and adrenaline like everything that goes on it's sensory overload and now you run out there and it's like a high school practice it's just strange like there's nobody there and everybody can hear everything and so I think it's really up to the players this year to kind of find that inner motivation that drive not only of course to want to win the game but not to rely on the fans i oh, look i have never played at the nfl level i've never come close to playing at the nfl level but i would imagine that when you're tired in the fourth quarter and you know you've been working hard all game and you're and you're physically spent and drained that sometimes you can summon some of that energy from the crowd and everything around you and now uh, it's up to each guy to do it on his own, which yeah. I, I think is a little bit challenging. For sure. And that's why we definitely appreciate having our in-house DJ Polsky for the little tunes that he can help with. Yeah, um, all those all those drops must be like easier to pick up because there's nothing else really to focus on. Like you've got a crowd to like distract you. Yeah. From, but. I mean, I hear Jared's water, water play a gajillion times on the broadcast. I can imagine being on the other side. We haven't heard Halle Berry yet, have we? We haven't yet. We're waiting for that one. Okay. Uh, news maybe, maybe Monday night. Maybe Monday night. He should. Hey, now. Maybe, that's right. He should use Halle Berry. He should use that. Or, or Big Wit or something like that. Ooh, that's a good idea. I actually just sent a little note over there. Send, um, send a note. Yeah, tell Jared. Well, you, are, you, are you allowed to get close enough this year to even talk to him or no? No, I just wave, and they wave back far away. Hey, just, just check. When he, when he was waiting, big wit. Call the play, big wit. <laughs> Hopefully they listen to this pod, and they're like, all right. Actually, I will say, Sean McVay, when reporters ask, like, hey, how come you're not doing those long down passes anymore? He will actually execute that the following week and go, oh, it's because of you, Gary, from the LA Times. So, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to te text Sean. Please, uh, well, actually, please. you're on the phone, right? And – we, we, we got to, instead of Halle Berry, we need, we need a big wit shout from Jerry Goff on Monday Night Like One of the plays has got to be called Big Wit. Big Wit, I, Big Wit. Right? But like, we don't know what the play is, but yeah, I'm in. I'm all about no, it. That, that's up to them to decide. Okay. Will you text Sean? He probably have a quicker, he'll listen to you. <laughs> Should we do that right now? Yeah. Are you going to do it? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> all right. Well, this, <laughs> the title's easy Adam Schefter. Yeah. Text Sean McVeigh on Ramblin' Podcast. Perfect. Uh, with your podcasters. What's the name of the podcast? Uh, Ramblin'. Ramblin'. Just say what? Serena's podcast. I don't know. I don't know if he has ever the time to listen, but. Uh, he's pretty in tune with. Right. With, we, we know he has a secret Twitter. Does he? I mean, there's no way he doesn't know all this information without like being a little in touch you know I mean, what I mean? and if the play works then, then i want credit for it too you know okay, perfect. Hold they on, might I'm just... bring it up in press conferences tomorrow maybe this is just... exciting maybe they'll have a shefty audible shefty shefty Ooh. Ooh, that <laughs> no, no. Uh, that would be <laughs> awesome <laughs> this is breaking the news before the news there you go <laughs> you heard it here first okay so i just i just sent it to him yeah, let's let, let's see, let's see what comes about this, and right, and then, and then if we hear big win on Monday night, oh, <laughs> we know where it came awesome. from. Yeah, that'd be kind of right. cool. The source, we know the source. <laughs> let's see if he responds. I don't know what his, I don't know what their schedule is. But let's see if he responds. Well, they're close today, right? So he probably gets a text right away. Yeah, actually, no excuses, Sean. Whatever you're doing, not let's, important. Let's, let's let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if uh, he's been up for six and a half hours already. So 
He's probably already yeah. eating lunch. I, I actually, I actually, one time, this is true. It was during the off season. I was getting out of bed at, it was a Saturday at 7 a.m. Eastern. And I rolled over and Sean had texted me 10 minutes before that. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm really slacking here. Like I'm getting up at 6.50 or 6.55 and, and I'm already getting a, a text from someone on the West Coast. Like that's crazy. He wakes up very early. Yes, I'm aware of that. Oh my God. And I don't know when he sleeps, but hopefully naps are involved. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll keep track of this text message that comes back. Yeah, if it comes in, we'll, 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 we, will, uh, we will break the news here. <laughs> Perfect. Um, news from around the NFL. Sh- Schefter, I love your podcast. Um, and your most recent one, you had Amy Trask, the former CEO of the Raiders. And um, given the Miami Marlins recent hiring, you spoke to Amy about you know, when could we actually see the first female GM in the NFL? So I just want to know, like, from your perspective, when do you kind of see that happening? And also, can we see maybe, would it be the first NFL female head coach or maybe general manager? Do we see one happening before another? I I hadn't thought about it. I I just know that we seem to be moving in a direction. And Amy talked about this on the Adam Schefter podcast. And she was great. I mean, she was really insightful and entertaining. Um, it seems to me like we're going in a direction where when you don't talk about it anymore, that's when it happens. It's sort of like, I'm going to say 20 years ago, 15, 20, we used to talk about black quarterbacks, right? And now you don't even, you don't even hear anything about black quarterbacks and the game's just played yeah. and there are guys out there. And so I, I think it will be great to get to a spot where, we're not even talking about whether or not there's going to be a first woman head coach or GM, that there's just women doing jobs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you there. That's great. Um, if you don't, if you haven't listened to it, I highly recommend listening to this one. It's a great conversation. Um, Thank you. Given the fact the NFC West is just, I mean, it's exhausting. I'll be quite honest with you. And I'm it's, not it's even. The, it's the opposite. It's the opposite of the NFC East. Absolutely. Yeah. What needs to happen in the NFC West for a, a distinguished leader, for a top team to emerge? You got three first place teams. I, 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 I don't know that you're going to get a top team that emerges. It's going to be the last one standing when you get to the postseason. I mean, that's yeah. what it's about, I think. I mean, I think that three teams are good enough in that conference to go to the playoffs. Three, And by the way, could we even get four? Could all four go? I, mean, I, I think San Francisco is so beaten up that I don't think it's realistic to expect that from the 49ers. I think that they're a really good team. They're a great organization, and they'll be back next year. But they, they seem to be so beaten down. It's hard to imagine that they do that. But listen, Kyle Shanahan is tremendous, and we'll see if they get that done. Uh, I, I see the Rams in the playoffs. I see the Seahawks in the playoffs. I, see, I can see the Cardinals in the playoffs. Like I see those three teams. And let's not forget they're – is at least one extra team in the playoffs this year. Last year there were six. This year there's seven, maybe even eight if they have to cancel some games. Yeah. So um, seven playoff teams, one from the NFC East, right? Maybe uh, one from the NFC North, maybe two. And the NFC – well, the NFC South, I could see um, Tampa and New Orleans. Yeah. Okay, so one, one – two, four, at least three in the NFC West. Perfect. We just, we just solved it. We just solved it. Just solved it. No, no need to even play the season. Okay. So, so it's no season. Well, I guess we asked who's left out, not who's going to be the, the leader. <laughs> well, at least we, we got there. We got the answer. <laughs> All right, Matt, it's time. Oh yeah. I guess I could have just kept talking because it's time for Serena's socially distanced social segment. <laughs> so, uh, the New York Times published an article about the most unusual presidential pets. So I have a trivia question for you. Which of these animals has not been a resident in the White House? Kangaroo rats, a badger, a bear, a hyena named Bill, or a one-legged rooster? I would say a bear. Serena? I don't even know what a kangaroo rat is, so I would go kangaroo rat. Okay, well, trick question. Those have all been residents in the White House, and I'm pretty sure it's just half 
of the list of Teddy Roosevelt's pets. He had an entire zoo. Wow. Man, kangaroo rats and a bear. Yeah. And a bear. fit that. Yeah. I mean, Schefter, you have, you have many dogs, and we met Ben earlier today, which was great. Yes. This goes yeah. with Matt's second yeah, question. So I think I'm, you're curi- I'm curious. That. Other than a cat or a dog, what would you want as your comfort pet, and what would you want as a guard pet? Are, are there choices, or are you just asking me? Just in is general. Is general, or is it from the list? No, not from well, the list. Again, just, like I said, okay. We, we, we've got three dogs. We've got two more ordered. We're going to have five Labradoodles. Those are great so, dogs. Yeah, we're a big Labradoodle family. Um, I, I, I wouldn't want any other pets because they take up enough time and give enough love that I'm not looking for any other uh, um, kangaroo rats or, <laughs> or bears or anything like that. So uh, I, I'll take them as my comfort pets, my protective pets, my everything pets, <clears throat> I pay enough from pet insurance. I'm not looking for more, any more pets. I just Schefter curious. Is off. He's not in the free agent market. He is not. <laughs> nobody's on the trade block in, in the no. pet world. No, no, Why did you get two more dogs? Were they just available? Cool. Well, no, 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 no. It, um, he, well, here's the deal. Basically, we had, um, we had two dogs at one point. We had three dogs at one point, and um, – we were up to five. We lost two. Oh. Uh, yeah. And so, but when we had three initially, my wife, um, I did not want any more pets. My wife wanted uh, two more dogs. And so we compromised. We got two more dogs. That makes sense. That's, that's, that's how marriage works, right? Yes. <laughs> right. Compromised. We got the two dogs that she wanted. When you right. lost them, is do you have... Five well, weeks? Well, well, we lost one a few years back, right before the NFL draft. And then we lost our beloved Maggie uh, the Friday of the pandemic, Friday, March 13th. Oh, it was wow. like, it was like, it was, it was unbelievable. Like the whole day. Um, it was, it was a day I'll never forget. Um, and so, you know, w- w- we knew that there would be more. And so my wife has an order in uh, for two more. And by the way, this time, um, Mike Trout texts me for fantasy advice for tomorrow night. What did he ask you? Is Chris Carson playing this week? (laughs) So we got Mike Trout. We got Mike Trout texting before Sean McVay. What the hell's going on here? Sean, we got a we got beef right now. How many random, well-known people, athletes, celebrities? Do you just get like, yo, Adam, who, should I start this guy or this guy? Uh, and don't well, they bother say, Fields for that? This. There's nobody that texts me more fancy questions than Mike Trout. Nobody. Wow. Nobody. Nobody. He's a, he's a fantasy freak. <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. He's a Jersey kid, right? Yeah. Oh, man, Mike Trout. Well, he's out here in L.A. Or Yeah. California, the Angels. Yeah, if if you had said to me that uh, my next, yeah, just, um, yeah, I'm texting, yeah. Like, yeah, he is. Just put the news on. I mean, as soon as, as soon as I saw somebody screen capped uh, Schefter picking up Antonio Brown, and I just immediately was like, yeah, I'm gonna just in case. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully it works out. You know, so far he's been okay. He, you know, he's been okay so far, right? Just been, yeah. I've been holding him on the bench. I got a pretty solid team. I'm feeling good. That's good. That, he's, he's, he's on both my fancy teams. Um, I still love that Mike Trout texted you over, Sean. It's here nor there. We will um, wrap up this podcast with say what, since Sean hasn't said a word. We will end with this. Um, Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> like, Sean. Uh, I'm we're, not we're hoping, hoping, we're, hoping, we're hoping he does respond before this uh, podcast wraps up, right? I'm like, what the heck? Um, this is a quote from right tackle Rob Havenstein, who was mic'd up during the Seahawks game on Sunday. Who's played very well. He's played very well. And uh, this was right after Kai Forbath, the kicker, injured his ankle. So Austin Corbett, another O-lineman, said to Havenstein, hey, we're going to have to score a touchdown because Kai is down. 
And Rob Havenstein responded to his fellow O-linemen, we want to score touchdowns because touchdowns are more points. <laughs> Adam, can you confirm that touchdowns are in fact more points than field goals? Serena, hold on. Let, let, let me file that to ESPN to put on the bottom line right now. Hold on a second. Touchdowns <laughs> are worth more than field goals per sources. Got it. Oh, I just got the push notification. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like the perfect response. Yeah, we got to score more touchdowns because those are more points. I'm like, oh. Accurate. Accurate. That's kind of the perfect response for also, if you know Rob, that is the perfect response for him. And also just kind of speaks to this offensive line that's really fun. And they never get enough credit. And I will always tell everyone, you got to have a good old line before anything else. But Big wit, big wit, big wit. Big wit, big right. I'm waiting for that. And honestly, I would not be surprised – if a Schefter play is made for Monday Night Football, are you kidding me? Oh, it's going to be great. Oh, love it. I'd be honored. All right. Well, hopefully we get to honor you. I apologize because I will not keep you any longer. Ben needs your love and attention, your beautiful, elaborate yeah. little dog. Um, so we'll wrap it up here. Another episode of Rambling in the Books. We've got Monday Night Football. If you haven't heard it, we'll tell you again. Against the Buccaneers, you can catch the game locally on ABC7. And, of course, ESPN, where you can find Adam Schefter all day long, all night long. He has two phones. If you enjoyed today's pod, make sure you hit that subscribe button as we'll be bringing you more episodes throughout the season. And make sure you stay up to date with all things Rams. If you haven't already, download the Rams app. But Adam, I appreciate you. Any word from Sean? Or are we done? It ha- he just... I think we're done. I think, I think, I think, I mean, I, I uh, don't want to put words in his mouth. I think he's going to respond. It just hasn't done it yet. But at least we heard from Mike Trout. At least, well, you did hear from Mike Trout. Yeah. So, so Mike Trout is a, uh, a more, well, I didn't reach out to Mike Trout, but he's a, he's a, I was going to say he's a more punctual, uh, persistent texter than Sean McVay. Who's like the, who's like your, holy cow, how did you get my number? But I'm going to respond because it's this person. Uh, well, Mike Trout might be that guy, right? I mean, that that's a pretty good one. I, yeah, good. I, I, I text every now and then with Chris Paul about fancy stuff. That's cool. You that's cover that. the NBA too. Like, I, well, I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's kind of fun. Um, those are the fun ones. Like anyone outside your sport, like football, that doesn't mean anything, right? Like, doesn't you know, count. this is your own family. <laughs> yeah. It's the people outside football that matter. Right. Friends are always more exciting when you're a teenager. I don't want to hang out with the family. I want to go out and hang out with my friends. I want to hang out with Chris Paul and Mike Trout. Exactly. 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 But you always love them anyway. You're always like, Mom, I'll be back for dinner. Don't worry. There we go. That's exactly it. I appreciate your time. You don't realize it. I really, really appreciate your time. Well, I appreciate you guys having me. Serena, nice to be with you. Nice to see you again. Continue to be safe. Do well. And good luck to your Rams team on Monday night. On Monday night football and check out the ESPN pregame show six o'clock Eastern before right oh yeah I'll see you there I'll be watching 